Darren Sun, head of information technology at the Hong Kong Housing Society, presented the following lecture on becoming an IT auditor. He explains the difference between an internal and an external auditor, and what an IT auditor really is. He encourages students to consider becoming an IT auditor and outlines the steps they need to take to do so. First of all, I represent CP Australia to have some sharing with accounting student. Um, second, uh, I was an IT auditor before, I, and I want to bring some new bread into the industry. Even though IT audit had the word IT, actually, many IT auditor are the graduate from accounting. So uh, let me have some sharing with you. This is the agenda for tonight. First of all, I want to ask you about my career. I think all of you are year three students, right? So I'm not sure whether you start to think about your future. I hope uh, after tonight I, I can give you some insight. More of you may consider to be accountant or auditor after graduate. I want to share with you more about um, the role of auditor, the differentiation between internal audit, external audit, and share with you more about IT audit tonight. Have you ever think about your career at this moment? This is a picture to depict the typical career path for accounting. So you may go to a private accounting center or a corporate accounting center. Then you climb your corporate ladder from a junior accountant to CFO eventually. If you go for a public accounting path, you may start from junior and then at the end climb to a partner. This is a typical accounting career path. But have you ever think about IT audit? To understand who is audit, first of all, you have to understand what is risk. I give you an example. This guy is water skiing world champion. He's strong, smart, and wish. He has 100% self-confidence to pay water skiing at the beach. He claims himself king of Miami, but his labor disagree. Risk. When we pay water skiing at the beach, or swimming at the beach. Have you ever think that actually some dangers already around us? From this picture, you can find that people are very happy swimming, playing water skiing at the beach. But actually, you can find that there is a shark around this risk. Risk is rock can go wrong was the next sentence. Will go wrong. This is a very famous uh, movie law. What can go wrong will go wrong. So maybe it's too late when you find a shark for you if we don't have any security measures at the beach. So why I prepare this example? Because Auditor is very similar to lifeguard. In what way? Let's see this slide. First of all, no matter you are auditor or a lifeguard, you have to do some risk assessment. For lifeguard, you have to do some risk assessment about the environment of the beach and see whether it is suitable for swimming or water skiing. And then he has to identify and test any controls to make sure people at the beach can swim happily without any dangers. And then he has to report the findings. No matter it is some security loophole or some recommendation, advice to management, to his manager about the real situation of the beach, whether any improvement on security measures so that people can swim happily, safely at the beach. 
after provide some advice and recommendation, no matter he's a lifeguard or auditor, he has to support the remedial action, but it is not one off exercise. He has to continue monitor and follow up. No matter he is lifeguard or an auditor, his main duty is to protect the assets and people's well-being. He enjoys to see and to ensure a peaceful and safe environment. So I want to share with you about the differentiation between internal and external auditors. Here are some differences. For internal auditor, actually he or she is part of the organization. The primary clients are management and board. He or she serve the organization by helping it accomplish the company objectives and improving operation, risk management, internal control, and governance processes. For external auditor, he or she is independent of the organization. Their primary clients is the management board, provide an independent opinion on the organization's financial statement annually. And the similarity are they have the mutual interest regarding the effectiveness of internal financial controls. Both professions adhere to codes of ethics and professional standards set by their respective professional association, such as CPA Australia. Actually, there are some collaboration between internal and external auditors. They will discuss common interests, they benefit from their complementary skills, areas of expertise and perspectives. Actually, um, they work very close together so that they can lavish their work done and they have some discussion. Together, they gain understanding of each other's scope of work and methods. Discuss all the coverage and scheduling to minimize redundancies. Provide access to reports, program, and working papers. They will jointly assess the area of risk of the enterprise. Actually, during the past 10 to 20 years, there are some transformation and escalation role of internal audit. About um, 20 plus years before, people may treat auditor as a watchdog because um, they may find that, oh, don't, don't do this because uh, that may raise an odd issue, something like that. Later on, it's much better at least they treat auditor as human being. But they still think auditor just a, a gatekeeper. They move on. People are afraid about auditor because they think the internal auditor just a company police. Don't do this, don't do this. And then otherwise, you will have punishment. Now, people will treat auditor as a professional. Because, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we have to comply with our ethics and we adhere to our professional bodies. So, our work done have professional standard. Now, we can find that some auditor already become the top management, the business leader of large corporation maybe CFO or maybe COO. So um, maybe some people may think that if he or she want to be a CFO, they have to start their career as accountant. But I can tell you, it's wrong. Um, actually, my previous company, um, our chief auditor had moved to the corporate CFO position eventually. And I, I find that some company, some large corporation, their COO was auditor before. Why? I will tell you why later, okay? Internal auditors are reaching beyond their traditional capabilities to partner with business and improve company operations. So when I was auditor, 
I had very good relationship with my business partner, no matter CIO, COO, or even CEO, because they know that I can help them to improve the operation effectiveness and efficiency, and eventually can have some saving in running costs and mitigate the risk of operation. But never be this one. Can you see the word? Incompetent. So we have to be a competent professional so that people will trust you, will seek for your advice. But how to become a competent professional, I will tell you later. To make it simple, internal all this business is internal control. So what are internal controls? Remember 3P. Policies, procedures, and processes decided to provide reasonable assurance that business objectives will be achieved through effective and efficient operations. Safeguarding of assets, including customer business data, reliable financial data, and compliance with applicable laws and regulations. There are a lot of definition here, but please take a look on this diagram. It's very important. No matter you find an internship or when you have interview for your job, when you talk about internal control with your potential employer, please remember this diagram. Three lines of defense. It's very important concept for internal controls. The first line of defense is management. So for each business unit or department, they have to establish their internal control framework so that they can mitigate the operation risk and to improve their operation efficiency and effectiveness. Second of defense, usually belongs to operation risk management team, compliance. They have to assess the risk by measuring and monitoring whether risk has occurred. Usually they may provide guidelines to management to run the operation. And they pay a governance role to make sure the department follow the company policy, procedures, and process. This is second line of defense. The third line of defense provides assurance that risk management framework is effective and operating effectively. Do you know which department take the third line of defense role? Yes, audit. So auditor actually is independent to do the assessment to make sure the risk management framework is both designed and operating effectively. Remember this diagram, okay? Very important. So operational control work, the auditor perform independent and objective reviews to support the assessment of control systems by conducting key risk audits. They have to identify the high risk area of the operation to do the audit work. Emerging risk audit, the business world or even the world is changing every day. There are new emerging risks happen every day. So um, in past five years, maybe the hot topics about cybersecurity, uh, the data privacy. So company have to react to these emerging risks. Usually they will invite internal auditor to do some emerging risk audit to ensure the company is competent to cope with this kind of emergence risk. And also auditor may do some requests from regulators. For all orders, reasonable assurance exists when all the component of control, including control environment, risk assessment, control activities, information and communication system, and monitoring activities are present and are decided and operating effectively. So the keyword here is 
reasonable assurance. There's no 100% guarantee, actually. For our audit work, we may take sampling. Also, internal auditor may perform independent and objective review to support the development of control systems. Through project risk audit, major projects across the company with significant system component. Because nowadays, the IT system, the computer system, already the backbone of the operation of every enterprises, you can imagine. If the computer system is not available, the company can't do any business because even they can't send out any email. And also, auditor may do some special project for management by request. Also, inter auditor will do some financial control work. The auditor responsible for developing the task plan and performing the testing required to support management assessment of internal controls over financial reporting for Saban Osley at SOX, SOX. As an accounting student, I think you all know what is Saban Osley at in US, right? It's also very important. So this is a summary about the audit approach. We have to identify the audit unit from the audit unit worth of a company. Every enterprise or organization, we will divide it into different audit unit. So we need to do some risk assessment to identify which audit unit we have to do because we have only limited resources, but there are a lot of risk in every company. So we have to identify the highest risk area to do our audit work. We have to understand from management about the business objective and the key processes. And then to do some risk identification and control objectives and do some scoping about our audit work. And then do the detailed risk and control identification. Then we need to do the field work to test the design and the operating effectiveness of the controls. Then we prepare the report for management for them to understand the risk level of the operating unit. Give you another diagram you have to memorize about internal control processes. First of all, we need to do the risk assessment about the control environment, and then understand the control activities, including information, communication, and monitoring. So far, I hope you have some very preliminary understanding on audit. What is IT audit? Because in the old days, you may only know that we have internal audit, external audit. But nowadays, the world is becoming more complicated. Even for internal audit, we have different streams. We may have financial audit, investment audit, IT audit, portion audit, actuarial audit, different area. We have different professional. So tonight, we focus on IT audit. What's IT auditor? Are they the engineer or the old man like this? Or smart young professional like you guys? Let's find out. Do you think the working environment of IT auditor like this? No, 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 don't worry. <laughs> First of all, before I, uh, we move on to talk more about IT audit, I have to give you some facts. Why it is so important to have IT auditor nowadays? This information about 2018 critical risk. And the information is extracted from Audit Director Roundtable 2018 Audit Pen Hotspots, which is very important source for the auditor to identify the risk area. And it is well known and very reputable source for auditor. You can find it the top five area. First one, data privacy. Second, cloud vulnerabilities. Third, information security behaviors. Fourth, corporate culture. Fifth, fourth. I use red color for the top three because they are directly related to IT. And the fifth one, fourth, which is related to IT, but have to partner with the business auditor. But the top three, we need 
some specialized skills to do this kind of audit work. I will not go through the details here, but I think you may be aware that data privacy is becoming more and more important. So in Hong Kong, we have PDPO. So you may be aware that in Europe, they will launch the GDPR soon. And in past few years, people may use the cloud solution. That means they move their data center, their infrastructure to the cloud. Actually, I, I believe you may also using the cloud solution, say your email system in university using O365, I think. I think you may use Google Drive or Dropbox. These are the cloud solution already. That means your document already put into cloud. That means you have to, to have some security measures. But the vendor will tell you they have sufficient security measure and you put your document in their cloud solution, it's very safe. But we need some assessment on this. So we need IT auditor. This diagram is from EY about the internal audit role in specialty risk area. IT system implementation, we need internal audit involvement over 50%, proactive involvement. Compared with other, you can find that IT audit involvement for the operation is highly involved, actually. This one is talking about the response from the employer, also from EY, Global Internal Audit Survey. They find that it is very difficult to find IT auditing skill. So in previous slide, you can find that people need the IT audit involvement. But this slide, you can find that it is very difficult to hire the IT auditor in the market. I can tell you uh, it's true. When I was the head of IT audit, it's very difficult for me to hire competent IT auditor in the market. It's not only in Hong Kong, but also in Asia. What is the scope of IT audit? An IT audit can be defined as any audit that encompasses reveal and evaluation of automated information processing systems, related non-automatic processes, and the interfaces among them. So the IT audit objectives concentrate on substantiating that the internal controls exist and are functioning as expected to minimize business risk. These audit objectives include assuring compliance with legal and regulatory requirements, as well as the confidentiality, integrity, and our ability of information systems and data. There are two main types of IT audit. The first one is IT journal controls. Maybe we call it ITGC, which apply to all areas of the organization, including the IT infrastructure and support services. Some examples of general controls are internal accounting controls, operational controls, administrative controls, organizational security policies and procedures, overall policies for the design and use of adequate documents and records, procedures and practices to ensure adequate safeguards over assets, physical and logical security policies for all data centers and IT resources. To make it simple, we can categorize these into three domain areas. First of all is asset security. Second, change management and development. Third, IT operations. So uh, we need to assess the controls for these three domain areas. The second category is application controls, which refer to the transactions and data relating to each computer-based application system. So now they, um, as I mentioned, computer system or IT is already the backbone of the companies. So we need the application system to do data processing. The objective of application controls are to ensure the completeness and accuracies of the records and the validity of the entries made to them. Application controls are controlled over IPO. IPO here means input, processing, and output. And include the methods for ensuring that only complete 
accurate and valid data are entered and updated in an application system, processing accomplishes the design and correct tasks. The processing result meet expectation and the data is maintained. So these are the typical IS audit subject. You can see the spectrum cover a lot. No matter the server platform, even say uh, Unix or uh, Windows, VMware, these already belong to different audit topic. So network, we will subdivide it into telecommunication, cabling, router, switch, access point, blah, blah. We already can do uh, over 30 audit here, actually. Because uh, you can imagine, say for database system, for Oracle, there are lots of IT related matter we have to review. No matter what kind of audit work we do, the ultimate goal of IT audit is to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of both customer and business information. So remember the keyword CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So it seems like very uh, interesting and attractive to be an IT auditor. At least you can easily find a job in the market. How to become an IT auditor? This is an extract from Isaka Standard Professional Competence. So Isaka is the well-recognized IT audit organization. According to the professional standards requirement, IS auditor should be professionally competent IS auditors should maintain professional competence. IS auditors are expected to be highly competent, blah, blah. I don't read it word by word, but the keyword here is competence, right? You can find competence in each paragraph. So how to become a competent professional? This diagram shows the progress, how to become a competent IT auditor. As all of you here, the foundation is to have a, at least have a first degree, no matter accounting, IT, engineering, whatever. Because um, actually, first degree is a, a very fundamental training for your career. But for sure, accounting and IT are the preference. After you have the first degree, you need to get a professional qualification. You can consider CPA, CA, CMA, CFA, and then you need to build your competence by taking another professional exam, including CIA, CISA, or PMP. I will share with you more about CIA and CISA later. As a professional, you have to develop yourself continuously and accumulate your experience. You may know that as a professional member, no matter IT audit professional or charter accountant, you have to maintain CPD so that you can maintain your professional credential. CPA Australia is one of the world's largest accounting bodies with over 160,000 members working in 118 countries. We have more than 25,000 members working in top leadership positions all over the world. So it's well recognized. And honestly, CPA program can build a solid foundation professional competency as an IT auditor, business auditor, or risk management professional. I will suggest you go to this CPA Australia website to learn more about the program. I learned a lot from the CPA Australia program, and also I gained a very constructive life work with my peer CPA Australia members. Another very important credential is Certified Internal Auditor, CIA. So it's a well-recognized and the only globally accepted certification for internal auditors. It includes three papers. And after you take the exam, you can learn more about internal control and how to do an auditor work. I can say that it is a very fundamental uh, and preliminary requirement to be an auditor. This one, as I mentioned before, it is offered by ISACA, ISACA, called Certified Information System Auditors, CESA. Again, it is globally recognized certification for IT audit 
control assurance and security professional. So through this exam, you can enhance your knowledge and skills. I can treat this as an admission ticket, as an IT auditor, because you, you can learn the skill how to be an IT auditor and some fundamental IT general control through this professional exam. We have over 130,000 professionals all over the world. This exam is not very technical. So in the old days, I find that there are a lot of accounting. Uh, their first degree is accounting, then they take the CESA exam. Then they move their career path to IT audit eventually. For accounting graduate and also for the um, practicing auditor, they have very good control concept. The missing part is some um, tactical knowledge. So they take some professional exam, they can move their career from traditional accounting or traditional auditing work to IT audit. This one is another admission ticket for IT auditor called Certified Information System Security Professional, which is offered by International Information System Security Certification Consortium, IC Square, which is a global non-profit organization specializing in IT security. Uh, compared with CISA, this one is more tactical. So honestly, as an accountant or with a business background, I will not recommend you to take this exam at the very beginning because otherwise you may be very frustrated and then uh, we will not pursue your, your career as IT audit. You may uh, consider CISA first and then um, with some certain experience, then you can consider this one. With accounting degree, CISA and CISSP, you will be a very competent um, IT auditor. What are the beauties to be internal audit? Why we need to consider to choose internal audit as career? From my experience, I summarize into eight reasons why we have to consider internal audit as a career choice. But first of all, I have to uh, declare that even I work as internal auditor before, I pay a regional audit role. So I need to travel around in Asia or even in North America. You can find that some of the reasons I mentioned here may be related to some regional. First of all, for personal development, so for internal audit work, you have exposure to every part of the company, from major system implementation to key business and emerging risk initiative. You have a lot of opportunity to gain more understanding about the company operation. You can imagine if you are a um, junior accountant, what you need to do is to do some, um, maybe to input some JE every day, Maybe you need to review some, um, some figures every day, at least for, for the first two years, right? But for auditor, we have to visit different department or business unit. Or if you pay a regional audit role, you may need to travel around to visit different operations within a very short period. For my um, own experience, we have to visit a department, no matter in Hong Kong or in other Asian country for th three weeks only to do the field work. So we have to understand the operation within a very short period. So it's very good for us to learn more about the company within a very short period. Second reason about the strategic insight. We need to develop the audit plan by focusing on company strategic priorities and related major initiative. That means we review what matters most to the business, so provide us with significant exposure and insight of the operational challenges associated with executing our business. Even though you may not be very senior, you have exposure to learn about the strategic pain from the senior executive because this is the job of an internal auditor. Third one is career progression. Because of the first two points, you can imagine, 
you can learn a lot within a very short period, right? That means you learn more than other peer from another department. So you can have better career progression. It's very reasonable. Fourth, about exposure, your job is to help the top management to identify the issues and find the opportunity to improve. So you need to work with the senior management. So you have very good exposure to the top management of a company. Teamwork. We have to mingle with other team members. You need to work with business auditor or investment auditor to get a form a team to do your audit work. So even for very technical IT audit, you still need to work with your junior or your, your peer. So actually, you are not alone. You have to do the audit work with a team. Six, travel. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I was regional auditor, so I need to travel around uh, in Asia and also in uh, US and Canada. That gave me a lot of opportunity to learn from different operations in different countries and learn from people from different culture. I think it's very attractive for you guys, young professional. Impact. Your audit work actually will give direct impact to a company. You may um, strengthen the, the control framework of a company. You may find some way to improve the operational efficiency. The eighth one is approach. We use a proven methodology to do our work, which is very useful in our career. So even though I move back to IT, I find that what I learn from audit is very important for my career and very helpful, actually. So what's in your suitcase? So here are the top 10 technology challenges uh, nowadays. I won't go through one by one, but you can find that some topics, say big data, posture management, uh, regulatory compliance, these are the challenges we are facing for each company. And they are very IT related. So even though um, you are an accounting student, you can't escape from IT actually. For IT auditors, actually we have our own challenges. We need to think globally and exercise high level of mobility and flexibility. We need to keep a breeze on new technologies and their risk, security, and control implications because you know technology change um, every day. We need to have a knowledge of up-to-date and relevant guidelines and good practices. We need to handle matter tactfully and we need to have the business mind because we deal with not only the IT head, not only the CIO, but we need to deal with some business leader, say COO or even CEO. So we need the business mind, not only um, just call some technical jargon. So we need to have good communication and negotiation skills so that we can get the top executive to buy in your recommendation and your findings. We need to be capable to produce good quality report with practicable suggestion for improvement. The keyword here is practical. We can recommend a lot of things if we need not to consider resources, we need not to consider money. So we need to provide a practical suggestion to management. Here are my advice to be an IT auditor. Integrity. Integrity actually is the backbone of every auditor. We need to speak the truth. We need to speak what are our findings to top management. Usually, uh, we, we need to deal with very senior people. So we need to have the integrity to voice out our, our findings to a very senior top executive. We need technical know-how. As IT auditor, we need to know the technical know-how so that we can find the improvement area and find a loophole of the technology. We need authority. If you want to be an auditor, first of all, you have to see 
the setup of the audit department or the IT audit team. You need the authority to deal with different senior top executive. So usually for a good setting of audit department, the auditor have to report directly to the board of director rather than to CEO because you can imagine audit actually is playing a governance role. Even CEOs should be under the governance of audit. So we need to report to the board of director in case there are some findings related to the CEO, right? We need to understand the business. IT in general is to support the business. So uh, we have to recommend some solution or improvement to management. So we need to understand uh, what's the business operation so that we can provide some practical and useful recommendation to management. The side of improvement, we need to challenge the status quo. Maybe some operation already running for many years, but we still need to find some way for improvement. So we have to, to have some desire inside for improvement. Independence and objectivities is um, obviously. Tactful and soft skill is very important because no one are happy to hear about uh, all the issues. I mentioned that we have integrity to speak the truth to top management, but we need to report the findings tactfully and need some soft skills so that we can let the senior executive to buy in your idea, your findings. Okay, remember these seven key words about IT audit. Thank you. Thank you.